Okay. 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 You know, okay. If I if I mess up your name, that just lets you know that <laughs> you know that I beat names up like Mike Tyson over here. That's what I'm saying. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. So remind you in the building. What's yes. going on, little lady? Yes. How you feel today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I woke up, so uh, I'm doing pretty good. All right, all right. So your 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 phone puts you in North Carolina. Is that's where you from? That is correct. That is correct. Uh, I'm North Carolina, but they're Mike. Are right. you born and raised down there, or or you just moved? Uh, there? no, I was born in Richmond, Virginia. But you know, my mom, and my dad was a Rolling Stone, so we rolled along with him. So, uh, but yeah, I was born in Richmond, Virginia. But I've been in North Carolina since I was three. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. All right, Mar- yep, yep. Mar- Maranda. Ma- Ma- Ramanya. Ramanya. Mm-hmm. Let's start with there your you let's start with your story, man. I love to hear how you got started in trucking and how's your journey been so far? Um, well, my son, um, who I see I'm I'm forty nine, he's twenty nine. About three years ago he said, Well, mom, because he drives trucks. And he said, oh, well, mom, you know, uh, you guys could drive teams. I'm saying to myself, what's a team? You know, I knew nothing. I knew enough about the trucking industry to stay out their way when they're on the highway. That was a, that's all I need to know about the trucking industry. And he was like, well, mom, you know, y'all could drive teams. I said, okay, you're going to have to explain that to me. He said, the truck never stops. I said, okay, what does that mean? He said, well, once you're done driving, then your husband take over. And then once he's done, you take over. I said, well, that's what you mean by the truck never stops. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that sounded pretty good to me. Um, I had never drove a truck. And, you know, I I, I thought I was going to drive manual, but until I actually got in the truck driving a manual, I said, nope, I'm okay with the restrictions. And we went to school together. We passed together. Now, we was we was head of our class because that's how we studied. Me and my husband, we bounced off each other. We were married 10 years. And we got started, you know, and, you know, we started, of course, we started one of these mega companies. And, you know, at that time, we were like, yeah, we rolled and we making money. Unbeknownst to us, of course, we knew in the industry we work is. So when I tell you uh, how has the industry treated me, the industry has treated me just about as much as I knew about the industry. So that's kind of like when you're playing basketball, you got other people. You defer, you one of the people on the team. You got other people that know better than you. So you know they ain't running you up and down the court. You know they ain't really telling you that the ins and outs of the game or how to run a play. They just let you just go at it. So we didn't have a lot of people that wanted to share their stories or their journeys unless, you know, you're on TikTok, Facebook, you know, that's all puffed up, you know. So um, the industry was doing well to us until about about six months ago. Mm-hmm. And that's when, you know, I literally was done. You know, I did a face, uh, TikTok video and said, look, I'm going to turn my CDLs. I need for y'all to give me other reasons besides money, you know, run away from home. I need somebody to give me some more information as to why they stay out here and be treated the way they treat it. My thing is, um, the industry is not being addressed with driving mental health, physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. Nobody's addressing those. But yet, they're treating us um, emotionally, physically, mentally, and they're, they're dogging us out, you know. So for me, that's the side that I found out about that I'm struggling with trying to fight back now. Okay. So that's how the industry is treated. All right. So, <laughs> so begin. So before we got to talking, you, you mentioned the fact that you and your husband uh, both went to go get your CDLs. Y'all, y'all went to go get them at the same time. We did. We, uh, we yep. put, we took our savings, paid everything off and we took a uh, six weeks, I think it was six weeks. Yeah. It was six weeks off. Um, went down to a school. Uh, we thought we wanted to go with uh, another company that paid for our schooling. And both of us went at the same time. We studied together, knocked that free trip out. We all both of us made 100 on our free trip, our driving test, everything. Okay. Um, okay. And then, of course, you know, we got started driving teams. Um, first company we went to, they wanted to separate us as teams. So he was on one truck, I was on the other. That wasn't going to work because if he want, if he if he learned how to run one way and I learned how to run another, now we, not only are we now run as a team, but now we got to figure out how we're going to operate as a team because you learn one way and I learn another. Okay. So, okay. For so, us, so, so for us, go ahead. So when, so when you guys, you, when you guys both decided to go to school, what was the school that y'all, that y'all went to? Uh, we went to Trans Tech. It's in Newton, North Carolina. 
Okay, okay. We went to Trans Tech. And that's where I found out how these mega companies are uh, puffing up the payment. The actual school, if we had went directly, would have been $2,300 a piece. But we got charged six grand a piece. See that's see that's how some of the some of the companies you know that that partners mm-hmm. with school they they, mm-hmm. they pay half they pay half or yep. maybe three quarters of that and then they mm-hmm. and that's how they get you guys up under contract but you guys yeah well, but see. but you guys you know did enough research to know that you guys didn't want a con y'all y'all didn't want to do contract uh, okay yeah well no we didn't. And honestly, the reason why we we weren't on contract, meaning it, it it specified in the paperwork that this didn't guarantee a job. So our the paperwork we signed was completely separated. So it's kind of like a student loan. Instead of us signing on with Swift, oops, instead of us signing on with them that we owe them, we signed on directly to the the loaning company that that paid for the school. Does that make sense? That makes plenty of sense. Yeah. So that so we again, you guys wasn't you guys wasn't obligated to none of the trucking right. companies, right? Because we, we did research that. <laughs> okay, that's what's before up. Before we jumped into this industry, All you right. know, we was like, "No, nah, I'm not gonna be stuck." <laughs> you know. All right. Um, so 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 fast track the the school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys okay. would would went with a few companies that wanted to separate you guys, but what was the company? Yeah. What was the company that you that you got with uh, that provided training for the both of y'all? It, it's only a few. It, was, it is. That is true. That's Covenant. Like, we didn't look for anywhere else. So Covenant um, also had an appeal to us, you know, because they, you know, they, they, you know, we trust in God, blah, blah, blah. I ain't going to get on that subject. But we went with Covenant. I would tell anyone. Starting out, that's a team. I don't know about solo because I can't talk on solo. But anybody standing that starting that wants to go as a team, covenant for us was a win-win. One, before you get on that road, and I see it happen all the time with this backing issue, backing, backing, backing. I, it, it, it hurts my heart that you got so many people out here that don't know how to back. It's not about not knowing, but they're not confident to even practice it, even when out there on their own. So with Covenant, after we got done with our trainer, we all trained in one truck. It was two. It was me and my husband and a trainer, and we all we all trained in, in one truck. I think it was like two hundred hours or something like that, the norm. And then before they give you your truck, you have to go through a complete week of backing. I'm talking about. I'm saying to myself, why are we going around these cones at a mile? The reason why we go around these cones is so you learn how to maneuver around stuff without hitting it and not being afraid to get close to it but not hit it. So for us, Covenant was a wonderful place for us to leave back in. Me and my husband, we can back with blindfolded. Now, I don't do blindside because I'm putting myself and somebody else at risk. If I can get it in there without doing that, I do it. But if I have to, then I let my husband do it. Okay, that's Ooh. what's up. Now, so, yeah. get- now, yeah. being that you went to trucking school, uh, what mm-hmm. what do you wish some uh, what do you wish uh, you would have learned uh, that you didn't learn, but you learned on your own? What do you wish um, that the trucking school would have taught you that you learned on your own? Uh, how important, uh, how super important pre trip is, and I, and I and I and the reason I said I got a story behind that where we are right now, but pre trip. Needs to be more, uh, yeah, you learn it. Okay, all the trucks got the same parts, all the thick, you know, uh, lock and jaws, blah, blah, blah. You learn it, but you're not taught why is it important. Like, why are you looking for that? I see so many people on these groups. Oh, give me a trick. Give me a quick way how to learn a free trip. There ain't no quick way because you could kill somebody. There ain't no quick way. That's how, that's how a boy got 110 years. There is no quick way. Like, there is no quick, fast way to get through school and just slide by and yay, you could jump up down and got your CDL. You're talking about 80,000 pounds that kill you and somebody else over and over and over again in a blink of an eye. So I wish that free trip was drilled in more in the sense of why you need to know it, why it's important. I also believe that backing needs to be a universal setup. And when I say universal, yeah, you got the 90s and you got the, the dock and you got all these fancy names for, the, for this geometry that you put on this truck. But a lot of people are being trained to go left, right, go left, 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 like uh, you're being told. So I wish schools would, one, slow down, 
but also um, come out of that book some more and go to practical. Okay. That's Comfortable with that truck. That's what's up. So Covenant was uh was the first company you guys went with. You guys got some uh Correct. you guys got some training. I, I would think because you know Covenant is not is 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 is, is not a is is not that company per uh per you know people say. But as far as teaming, no. but as far as you know, getting that that same team that same team training, you know, per, uh-huh. you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, husband, right. wife team. I, I think mm-hmm. that, that, that's a, that's a good, that's a good thing. Now, if you team, in, if also you, too. if, also, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Also too, though, the up thing, this is the thing where you gotta, you gotta put in a group what's good for you. So with Covenant, there were a few things. You got your team and where you learn together. They gave you guaranteed pay. And then they also, um, it's forced dispatch, so you would go, you would go to different places and learn different terrain. So with Covenant, it, it's no the pay was the pay sucked. We both started out at thirty two cents as a team, okay. And I think we was at thirty four when we decided, no, we're not gonna take no money like this. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking for a place to go, that's why it burns me with the way how backwards the, the drivers are getting information. You got to put it together as a whole. Like you, you got to say, okay. The money's good, but am I going to be treated like shit from the dispatch? Excuse me. Is the money is good, but am I going to get home time? The money is good, but am I going to be able to actually run low? The money is good, but am I going to be healthy? Are these people going to respect that I need my thirty four? And see, that's the other thing in school. They tell you, oh, you 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 supposed to get a thirty four, but you don't have to take it. No, no, no. You need to take your thirty four. You need to take your thirty four so you can regroup. So forget running off recap. Take your thirty four. Wash your clothes, take a shower, watch it, watch a show, call your mama, call your daddy, because out here in this role, you'll lose them. Do, call your kids, FaceTime, don't do nothing. But that's the other thing that I wish schools would stress. Yes, you're supposed to take a 34. That's legally my right. You cannot fire me if I say, look, I need my 34, and I need it right now. But you got drivers that get pushed to run their, to run their, to run their recap. You know, this this whole industry thing, when I tell you I done dug down deep in it, this I know I, I'm only one driver, but this stuff needs to change. And it's not about us getting in line and stopping our trucks. That's not going to change anything. We have to learn to articulate, one, our values, number two, what we need from the industry. We know what, what dispatchers need and, and shippers and receivers need. They need us to get that. They load their own time. They need to get it there safe so we don't kill nobody. And they need us to run run their product across the United States. But what do I need from you as an industry? Hmm. I haven't thought about you know, that. I haven't about thought that, about that. You you put you presenting some uh some very good points. You you mentioned about uh, uh you know, you you saying that you're 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 close to uh leaving the industry because uh mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of issues haven't been addressed. What are those issues mm-hmm. you like to you like to address that the industry is not uh, um, looking at? I believe the industry is not looking at truckers the same way okay, prime example, in, at Covenant. They they called us and said, Hey y'all out and y'all truck too much. It's fifty degrees, four degrees. We all know how that works. So the very first thing I said, well, I tell you what, I'm going to switch with you. You sit in a warm office, so I'm going to sit in a warm truck. I don't care about your idle time. I'm warm in my truck. You're warm in your office. Now, anytime you want to switch with me and let me come sit in your warm office while you come sit in my cold truck, we good. So I think what happens is we as drivers, we allow ourselves to be treated like sheep and cows to the slaughter because just like you need a shower and you sit in the office, I need a shower. Just like you got clean clothes, I need clean clothes. Just like I'm tired, I need to go to sleep. Just like you talk to your mom and your daddy every day, I need to talk to mine. I need to be treated like a human. I got mental health that I'm dealing with. I got physical health that I'm dealing with. I got emotional health health that I'm dealing with because I'm missing my family. And Lord knows I'm sure I got spiritual health because spiritual um, health that I have to deal with because I can't find these little trailer truck stops. These little trailer, you know, be a disco, sit and sit quiet, meditate. I ain't got nowhere to do yoga. I ain't got nowhere to work out of no gym because I can't fit no 53-foot truck in no Planet Fitness parking lot. 
So the the, the, the the industry, the things that are not being addressed in the industry is what's going to keep this country running. If ever, if you got 50 truck drivers going down the highway and all 50 of them have heart attacks, what do you think that's going to affect? If all 50 of them jump off, decide to run their truck off the side of a bridge because they, they mama died and they in California and the company don't care, just we'll send you, we'll get you a load home. That's bullshit. So for me, we, we need healthier food or at least a way so that everybody in the industry, this is what they need to teach in school. Take care of your mental health. Take, cause they tell you to do it, but they don't tell you how to do it. They tell you to run your truck, but they don't sit down with you and do budgeting. You got so many truckers out here that are living paycheck to paycheck, which is why they push themselves, which is why that guy didn't know how to take that ramp. He didn't know what else to do because I guarantee you, Nobody sat down with him except to say, here go some keys. I know you know how to drive a car. I know you can't read that road sign, but we're going to give you a key because I need you to run my load. Mm, mm, mm. Man, you 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 is so fire right now, man. For for a young driver that's been in this industry for only three years, man, you 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 talking like a veteran right now, man. I mean, you you I'm I'm sitting here. I'm I'm sitting here enjoying this conversation with you, man, because I'm Appreciate like that. this this is this is some of the this is some of the things that people don't talk about. They don't talk mm-hmm. about they don't mm-hmm. talk about mental health. They don't talk about how mm-hmm. how we need healthier uh healthier choices out here. They're not talking about how the how the how the how the industry, how the companies is treating these drivers. You got some companies yeah. out here that be talking that BS on about, oh well, we all about family and we treat the truckers mm-hmm. like family and all like that. But if you treat the truckers like fam mm-hmm. if if you're supposed to treat the truckers like family, then you know, help help that driver out in any type of situation. Of course, some, something at home happens at home. Mm-hmm. I, I got to wait mm-hmm. for you to get me a load to get me back home. Yes. No, let me get a plane, go back mm-hmm. home, take care yep. of my business, and then get me yep. a plane back, and I'll go and get the truck. That's right. That's right. And see, it's a so good example. Let's, let's, let's take where we are now. So good example. So we we so let's talk about free trip real quick because I'm trying to say it quick, so, which I hate rushing over anything because that's what's wrong with the industry. So we were getting ready to pick up a load, 35,000 pounds. It's a Home Depot load. We in a truck. I ain't had no problems with the truck. You know, we running the truck. So when my husband or I are hooking a load, we are both, we try to both be up so we can check behind you because that lock and jaw ain't no joke. There ain't nothing to play with. So he, he hook it. I hook it. He check in. You know, he making sure, do the tug test. Watch on, be on the outside watching the tug test, see if he notice anything. So we were having a hard time hooking up to this trailer. So he said, well, babe, the, the trailer and the truck are kind of tilted inside. He said, so I said, well, babe, I said, did you look, get up under there? He said, yeah, the same. You know, we go over the free trip. Did you check? You know, you check the pin, blah, blah, blah. So my husband gets in it. We're at the yard. My husband gets in it. It's hooked. He did a tug test three times. Backwards, forward. I did one. Back and forth. Trailer hooked. He pulls out about. I'm going to say at least maybe three feet, the whole trailer comes off the back of the truck and falls on the ground. So just imagine if we've been on a highway with 30,000 pounds, 30, I don't know, I can't remember, 30,000 pounds, 35,000. Just imagine if we had been on a highway and that trailer had to come off. We could have killed ourselves, somebody behind us, somebody's kid, somebody's mama. So with that said, Okay, so we have the company just ain't making enough money. Nothing wrong with the company. They're great. They took care of us. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But we don't have that other that other uh, five list that we, that we need to have as a whole in order to be healthy. So financially, so they put us in a hotel. Okay, great. We're going we gonna to send y'all, we're we going to put y'all in another truck. Okay, so here, now here's where the humanity comes in at. All right, so we've been in a hotel five days. Okay, great. Thank you for taking care of us. We appreciate it. Now, I eat healthy, so all of my stuff is in the refrigerator. So I had to restock the hotel refrigerator. No problem, because I'm going to eat like I'm supposed to eat. But you're not going to door-dash me to death. But anyway, so they said, okay, we got a truck for you. They wanted us to go pick this truck up two hours from where we are. We have to see all of our stuff out of this old truck. Now, we're not talking about just to take a bag, because you're not sending me to California with a gym bag and my stuff that I need to keep me healthy on the truck. We're talking about humanity here. So they wanted us to go pick the truck up that's two hours away, come back, empty out a truck, and then go hook that load tonight, which was last night. Are you telling me that you want me to be up all morning, 
go drive to pick up a truck, do an inspection, come back, 